Hello, MJ7NLK here and welcome back to the channel. If you're already a subscriber then I would like to thank you for your continued support and if you're not then please click the subscribe button, it really does help the channel out. Today we are looking at the President Truman CB radio. We will be taking a tour of the box, doing an unboxing, undertaking power tests, modifying the radio and unlocking the 120 channels. We will also be tweaking the radio to see what power is achievable, so stick around. We also get out and about to test the audio receive of the radio, and we filmed some of this beautiful island I'm fortunate enough to live on. While we were out, we came across an old bus, which the owner was kind enough to let us film as well. All president radios are named after US presidents. And this one is named after President Harry S. Truman, the 33rd US President. Truman's tenure was between April 1945 and January 1953, and his nickname was Give em Hell Harry, which he did four months into his term by dropping a few atom bombs on Japan, which ultimately ended World War II in the Pacific. After that, he had a bit of a break dealt with some strikes, some economical issues, then interfered in Europe a bit and helped to form NATO. There was also something about corruption and a fridge freezer, but we'll gloss over that. Then in 1950, when North Korea got a bit bitey and invaded South Korea, Truman stepped up and sent in US troops to police the situation. His motivation was to protect Japan, that he nuked, which he now considered strategic, and he didn't want to appear soft on communism. Truman died in December of 1972 at the ripe old age of 88. Talking about North Korea, that reminds me of a joke. I asked my friend in North Korea how he was. He said he can't complain. Oh, go on, just one more. Why did the chicken cross the road? to escape North Korea's long-range missiles. Moving on. There are two radios named after Truman in the current President lineup, and these are the President Harry III and the President Truman. I wanted to clear something up about President Electronics Group and some questions raised by viewers. I have said in the past that President Electronics was headquartered in France but originated in the USA. If you look at the history published on their website, it says that in 1976, first importation of the President brand in Europe from the USA. Then in 1978, it says creation of the Group President Electronics, GPE, head office in south of France. So President Electronics is a French company which was established in 1978 as the logo says, but the brand was imported from the USA in 1976. It wouldn't make much sense for a French company to name its radios after another country's presidents. Just be thankful we aren't reviewing the President Emmanuel Jean-Michel Frédéric Macron. It's quite a handsome radio, doesn't work very well for three hours a day around lunchtime, nor at the weekends, and occasionally smells of burning sheep. On his biography, it says that he was a French banker. Yes, <laughs> I had to read that twice. That reminds me of a joke. Where's the best place to hide your money? Under a Frenchman's soap. Hopefully, I got away with that one. OK, one more. What's the most useful bit of equipment on a French army tank? A rear view mirror, so they can see the war behind them. Moving on. I purchased this radio with my own money. No one has editorial input over this content. All views and opinions are my own. I purchased this particular radio from Knights Electricom, who are a fine purveyor of CB radio equipment based in the UK. You can also purchase these radios from Moonraker and sometimes on Amazon, so do shop around. One last thing to get out of the way 
before we dive into the unboxing is that I must point out that modifying a radio is at your own risk. I am doing this so you don't have to. You will have legal obligations in your region. With regards to radio transmissions, licensing and power outputs, you should always ensure that you are not causing a nuisance and more importantly not causing any radio interference or distress to others. The President Truman is a basic CB radio and of the older generation of electronics. It costs £84.50 from Knights but they have now sold out. Moonraker currently has them on special offer at £69.95. It has 40 channels AM and 40 channels FM, it's 12 volt only, it has an ANL filter, gotta have an anal filter, Woohoo! it has ASC third generation, it is quoted as 1 watt AM, Coo -coo. that's terrible, and 4 watts FM. The audio response is from 300 hertz to 3 kilohertz. Maximum power draw on transmit is 1.7 amps, and the maximum audio output is 2 watts. The radio has key beep, but sadly, it does not have Roger beep. Holy moly! The radio comes with the standard DNC520 microphone, but this is the version without the up-down buttons on top of the handset. The radio can be unlocked to 120 channels. Power is adjusted via the RT203 pot for AM and RT204 pot for FM. We will test the standard power, modded power and then adjusted power to see what can be achieved. So let's have a look around the box. So this is the President Truman. It has automatic squelch control third generation, as mentioned before. It supports all European norms, which means it will also include the UK FM40, which is nice. This QR code will take you to the Truman page on the President Electronics website. Looking at the front of the radio, we have a rotary dial for channel selection, which is really nice to see. Some of the more basic President radios uh, are using up-down buttons now, uh, and I much, much prefer a rotary dial. It has an on-off dial here and volume, and the squelch and automatic squelch control here, and then just two buttons on the face of the radio. So very, very basic. Uh, moving round to the side, you can see the MU Rata Inside logo. This is a noise filter that used to be found in only the best radios of the past. It's most likely a good quality ceramic filter. Moving to the back of the box, uh, all present radios have a stencil of the front and back of radio uh, on the back of the box, as this one does. We can see that it has an SO239 connector, uh, extension speaker and power cable, and that's about it. So, a very basic radio. And that's the tour of the box. Now let's open it up and see what's inside. So I'm not expecting much for the money here, but President do make good radios. So let's see what you get inside the box. And we get an accessories bundle. And we get the radio itself. So let's put the user manual aside for the moment and we'll come back to that. Let's have a look in the accessories package first. So you get the mounting frame for holding the radio um, under a dashboard. You get the accessories package with a microphone clip and the two nuts to attach the radio to the bracket. And you get the microphone. So this is the standard DNC 520, but without the up-down buttons. So that's a little bit stingy, um, but there we go. It's the first one of these I've seen without the buttons. And then let's look at the radio itself. Let's just remove that.
get rid of the noisy packaging. So on the rear of the radio, we have the microphone, the SO239 and a non-detachable power cable. And moving around to the front, let's just do the peel. Very satisfying. Um, put that to one side. Okay, so the President Truman, that's pretty much it. The downward firing speaker on the bottom. <clears throat> so if you're gonna mount this inside a dashboard, um, then you'll need to use the external speaker because you'll be uh, obscuring the um, speaker from the radio itself. Um, but as you can see, uh, a very, very basic radio only has two buttons on the front. So let's, uh, let's move on and have a look at the user manual. So let's open up the user manual package. So we have the number one CB president radio sticker, which every president radio comes with. This is quite a small one. I have seen some much larger versions. And we have the user manual. So let's have a look. Oh, look, oh, look, it's in French. Run away, run away. And we also have it in Spanish, uh, English, and also Polish. Um, not many pages in, in this manual. It is quite a small manual because the, the radio is, as I keep saying, very basic. Um, so that's the user manual. Let's uh, have a quick tidy up and then we'll do a standard power test. So as just stated, the user manual doesn't contain many pages, which is funny really, as that's just like the pages covering military victories in the French history books. I live about 15 miles from France, so it's just a bit of playful banter. Love you guys, really. Right, moving on. Now, one thing I have noticed, well, one thing I need to explain to you first is how to switch regions on this radio. Uh, what you do is you hold the F key and you turn the radio on, and then you'll see that it will have the uh, flashing F symbol. U is for UK. If you change the dial to EU and you then push and hold the F key, you'll get an audi audio sound to confirm, then you turn the radio off, turn the radio back on, and you're now in that mode. Now, one thing I have noticed, which is a bit strange, is that on the AM FM button, in EU mode, we can comfortably switch from AM to FM. And if you're in UK mode, okay, the AM FM button switches between FM UK and FM. You cannot access AM when it's in UK mode, um, which is not very good. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just do a quick power test here, channel 20 on UK, uh, UK FM, we are getting 3.06 watts, 3.06 watts on FM and FM UK, 3.24 watts is the output. Now let's switch to European mode and see what power outputs we get there with AM. Okay, we're in AM, and we get 3.05 watts in AM, which is substantially more than the one watt that it says in the user manual. Uh, and switching to FM, we get 3.06 watts in FM. So that covers the standard power outputs. I'll only be looking at the UK and EU. I'll have to switch between the two because we need to do AM power test and we can't do that from the UK mode, which is a little bit disappointing really on this radio. Okay, so next we are going to open the radio up and have a look inside. So before we open the radio up, I have just checked the user manual and on page 50, 
it says that modes EC and U do not support AM. Modes PL, E, D and EU do support AM. So that could be uh, a deciding factor if you're going to buy this radio in the UK. However, we will see when we mod the radio uh, if that changes anything. OK, moving on. So in order to open the radio up, a lot of people make the same mistake and they'll remove the top lid cover when actually you want to remove the bottom because that's where the speaker is and the circuit board effectively runs along the bottom of the radio. So let's, uh, let's open it up. So we're going to remove the lid now and have a look at the insides of the radio. Now this speaker is actually soldered to the board, there's no clip or connector to remove that so that's uh, not ideal but the cable is long enough for the lid to lie flat. Now I'm going to show you the insides of the radio and show you where the modification parts are. So this wire here needs to be cut, this white wire, um, and the jumper should be next to it, which it is, which is right here between the two capacitors. And the jumper is marked um, 301, if my eyes are working properly, because the writing is quite small. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is uh, perform the modification. So in order to perform the modification, um, we need to jump the jumper and cut the wire. Um, it might be a little bit difficult to show this on camera, so an image will be put up on screen so you can see exactly what you need to do. So let's jump, uh, jump the jumper. So that's the jumper done. And the last thing to do is to just cut the white wire. And that's, that's it. So it's always good to um, move the wires apart, as I have done here, uh, so that they don't accidentally um, sort of touch if you just cut it and leave them in their original position. So let's put the radio back together and then we will perform a power test. So after you've modified the radio, um, turning the radio on will display TS on the right hand side in favor of the uh, U, EU, etc. There is no mode now, you cannot switch um, between regions, you now have band blocks. So if you can see here, we have uh, A, B, C. As I push the F key, it will go to B, and then to C, and then back to A again. Uh, so you get 40 channels in each, which unlocks the, the, the 120. Now this is a bit of an issue for UK FM, because you're unable to get to the UK FM frequencies. Um, you can switch between AM and FM, but there's no FM UK option. So I will just demonstrate this now with my trusty Malashite. Um, if I go to band block B, the UK channel 27.60125 is uh, UK FM channel 1. So if I tune into that on the Malachite, um, you'll see that I just miss it on channel 16. Um, if I go channel 17, a bit further up, and if I go um, a little bit lower to 15. So 15 I'm missing. 16 just passed. That's the closest I can get on the uh, 120 channel. 
Um, band ranges. It would have been nice to have had the 120 channels and also be able to switch it into FM UK to have the FM UK uh, channel frequencies. So channel selection uh, is done again via the channel dial. You do not have alphas in the 120. So if I go to channel 18, I get 19. I don't get 19 alpha. Um, so there's no alphas, it is just the straight 120. I'll put the frequencies up on the screen um, that you get. Uh, on, the, on the radio. So let's continue on and do the power test. So, so FM band block A channel 20. Uh, we are getting 6.60 watts. So 6.6 .6 watts is the power that increases on the modification. Switching to AM, I'm not expecting much here. 3.10 watts is the uh, output on AM. So the next thing we're going to do is um, pop the cover off and see if we can change... Uh, any of the pops to see if we can get a little bit more power out of it. Right, as far as power adjustments using the um, pots on the board, if I can show this, um, there are two potentiometers here. There's this one, which is RT203, and 203 is marked up as AM. Uh, and then there is a space for another one right next to it, which is RT204, which should be for FM. Now we don't have a pot installed on this machine on that um, in that uh, space, so this is telling me that the only adjustment we could make is to the AM power output, and the modification of cutting the wire um, is giving us the FM power increase. So what we'll do um, is we will turn the radio on. So we're in AM channel 20 in band block A um, and we'll just key up and we're getting two point, well, three watts and we'll adjust that pot for... So the maximum I can adjust the AM to um, is 5.36 watts by winding that uh, pot up to its maximum output. So that's a reasonably decent increase on AM. So let's, uh, let's put the radio back together. Now I do get asked this question quite a lot, and that is that if you return the jumper back uh, and leave the wire cut, uh, what does that do to the power output? Well, the answer to that is it depends. On some radios, jumping the jumper back will also revert the power, um, but in most cases it doesn't. So let's have a look here and see. Let's turn on the um, power meter. Turn on the radio. So this is with the wire cut um, and the AM pot adjusted, but we're in UK mode, so uh, we have no AM. Channel 20. And on FM UK, 5.56 watts. And FM, 5.39 watts. And let's just let's just switch to EU, channel 20, uh, in order to get AM. Let's just try that now. 5.41 watts on AM and on FM 5.41. So that's it, that concludes all of the power uh, adjustments and the power settings. <laughs> Thank you.
So we're doing a test on the um, President Truman. We're on channel 35 FM UK. We're gonna put a call out. P-Dog, P-Dog, do you copy, over? Yes, I copy that in clear, over. Yeah, what's the uh, audio quality like on the transmission from the President Truman, over? It's very nice, clear, I can hear you well and clear. Um, Bit of stuttering, apart from that, lovely. Over. Roger that, roger that. Uh, thanks, P Dog, thanks. Over and out. Thank you very much, MOJ. 7 Over. So, in conclusion, would I recommend you buy this radio? The answer to that is quite simple. Hell no. Go buy a Barry 2. It's a much better radio. However, that is not to say that it's no good. All President radios are decent, but when compared to the Barry 2, it's a no-brainer. Audio received was clear, with little distortion, and perfectly loud enough, even in a noisy cab. If cost is the overriding factor, then at under £70, it's a decent little unit, but really does lack some basic features. No Roger beep, really? And no AM in UK mode? It's quite frankly unforgivable. So we won't be recommending this one. I hope you found the information in this video helpful. If you did, then please help the channel out by liking and subscribing. This really does help and ensures that I can continue to provide content. Feel free to buy me a coffee. Details are in the description below. And if you have any questions or comments, then you know what to do in the comments below. All I ask is that you keep it respectful. Nasty know-it-alls need not apply. So, until next time, stay safe, stay happy, and catch you in the next one.